Our next guest is a uh, six-time Grammy Award winner and a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. As a founding member of the band Genesis, uh, his uh, new uh, CD features orchestral arrangements of some of his uh, greatest known songs. It's entitled New Blood. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Peter Gabriel. You haven't been here for 10 years. For God's sakes, what have you been doing in the last 10 years? Um, I've been making babies, uh, oh, huh? making some music. Good yeah. for you. How many, how many children do you have? Well, I have two wonderful daughters from round one and uh, two little boys from round two. <laughs> so. Wow. How many, how many rounds was the fight? Never mind. Uh, and how old are the uh, new girls? It's the, the new boys. Uh, the oh, new three boys. and ten. Three and ten? Yeah. What is that like? I mean, that's got to keep you... I mean, you're exhausted, right? I'm exhausted. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Daddy does the night shift uh, yeah. quite often, so and we, we're in toilet training. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and the kids. And, and what about <laughs> <laughs> what, what about uh, your uh, early uh, upbringing as compared to theirs? Like when when you were, did you have a happy childhood yourself? Um, yeah, no, it was pretty good. But uh, you know, I was sent to the school that uh, my father and his father were sent to. Pri private school, sort private of. Private school. So that was a little like Tom Brown's school days at the time. And what does that mean? Is it difficult? It was uh, disciplinary, uh, stern. Yeah. Ruled by fear, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I got there on the first night, and uh, I was used to rooms with curtains. There were no curtains, and you'd see the the headlights sweeping across the ceiling, and it was just a sound of sobbing and masturbating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 and I think I think one of the courses was uh, sobbing and masturbating yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of my honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but um, so, but but it was uh, pivotal in your musical career that experience at that school, wasn't it? Well, yes, I found a, a few other lost souls that would make noises, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and we became a group. What was the, the name of the first group? Genesis. The, 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 that's what you called the first group. Yeah. <laughs> so we were just trying to be songwriters, really. And, right. Um, and then the music bit came later. Yeah. Um, and, and now that you have uh, achieved this uh, worldly success, you've turned your attention to uh, other things, such as uh, helping with human rights violations around the world. And to me, not knowing much about it, what I hear and do know about it is appalling that it exists at, at such a large uh, scale. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm particularly with this... Uh, uh, Declaration of Human Rights that all these countries signed on to, but very few of them, uh, including our own uh, practice. And so uh, I didn't know anything about it, but after I wrote the song Biko, I got invited out to these amnesty tours and started meeting people who had been tortured, uh, watched their f families being killed, and, and they think you can be useful, so uh, it, it's hard to walk away from. Isn't it uh, staggering to you that in this day and age that this sort of brutality, mindless brutality, still exists? Seems to be thriving, actually, in certain parts of the world. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, you know, I think all the Arab awakening that's happening is, is incredibly hopeful. And we now have mobile phones everywhere. Mm -hmm. There was this wonderful African girl, so she was asked what's going to change the world, and she just pulled out her mobile phone, right. and, uh, and you're seeing video everywhere. And so when people have had the courage to, in the past, you know, they've maybe gone off like a little firework, and then darkness and obscurity has returned. But now you can connect all these little acts of courage and video them, get those videos out, right. get campaigns. It's amazing. It, it, the population has truly now become nearly one organism because of this electronic device. Yeah, and uh, I think that's very exciting because I think, you know, a lot of the bad stuff is allowed to happen because of national sovereignty. Shadows, darkness. People think they're not going to be uh, caught. They, they can get away with it. Exactly. Now they get seen. Yeah. What, uh, uh, changing the, the subject, yeah. uh, again, uh, do you see Phil Collins at all? Uh, I haven't seen him much. Yeah, I tried to hook up with him when he came to London last time, but mm -hmm. he's, he's had a tough time, I think, and a lot of drummers uh, get neck and back injuries after a while, and he's he's suffered a bit with that. Yeah. <laughs> are these are these you? Uh, these are me. Yeah. You know. That's see, <laughs> it was it was actually a great relief to see Adam Sandler in a dress because uh -huh. I knew I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't the only one. You're wearing a dress and what appears to be a wolf head. Yeah. Well, you know, it was an, an album cover. That was Here, a character called the Slipper Man. It was complete with inflatable testicles. <laughs> uh, and we had a sort of a inflatable phallus that would unfold. All right, ladies and gentlemen and of the jury, I'm... 
<laughs> I'm going to clear the room. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute recess and talk this over.